Hi there. So I was just taking apart one of these cheap drills, as I have done several times now, uh, to prepare it for uh, use in a combat robot. And I was thinking that a couple of years ago I could really have used a video like this to show me the do's and don'ts and the risks and just in general a bit of a helping hand when it comes to taking one, one of these things apart. So I'm going to start off by just taking the one screw that I've left in here out. I've already taken this one apart, I reassembled it loosely for the sake of the video. Get this screw out, you can see what the innards look like. Um, battery terminals, uh, the switch business, which you can just pull out. It occurs to some people to use these things because, you know, that's a proportional control and you know you might be able to do something with a servo to get the speed control effect that you're going to want eventually in your robot. I wouldn't recommend that. More things to go wrong. For what it's worth, you're better off getting a, if you like, legitimate speed controller. Pull this whole unit out. There we go. Put that aside. And that's effectively your unit. Now, um, there are certain parts that we don't want. We don't want the clutch slash torque system that's in this. Um, and obviously, or for most cases at least, we don't want the chuck. So. To start off, take the battery out of the way. Incidentally, the batteries in these things, they're cheap Nikad cells, normally ranging from 1 to 1.3 amp hours. Um, they're alright. Uh, I find they struggle on um, how much power they can put out. That, those can be used. You might be better off looking into some cheap, as I say, cheap NIMHs from somewhere like Component Shop or getting some um, lithium polymer batteries for no weight at all and incredible power so moving on we've got our drill here now the next step for taking this apart is to take the chuck off and uh, on all of these drills that certainly I've come across and I don't see why any drill would be different is they have a reverse screw thread in there I'm struggling to get this on the camera um, and that's quite fiddly but you just take the screwdriver stick it in there I've already loosened this one and you've got to twist it obviously in the direction you wouldn't expect to it should come out now there you go uh, this is very important keep that because you'll be reusing it uh, at least you're likely to be and if not it's just a really handy thing to have so uh, keep that safe stick that in the battery box not the battery box now the chuck should twist off in a normal direction, as you'd expect it to. Again, unlikely you'll use it, but um, worth keeping because it's a nice, nice little thing. And you know, if you if you're using a setup where you've got a threaded rod for a lifter or something like that, keeping the chuck can be handy. So we'll keep that. Uh, next step is to remove the um, clutch slash torque changer thingy. My what's it? And you can see. There are two little screws there, I don't know how well the camera's picking those up, there and here. So you want to loosen those off. Now, at this point, you want to start getting careful, because behind here, and I'm already fighting it with my hand, there's quite a powerful spring. Nice, big washer-style thing that can be used for... Um, oh, sorry, I'm not getting in there on the camera. That can be used for uh, mounting the drills in some way. Um, but again, if not, just a handy thing to have. Get to the box. The next thing to come off is this unit. You can see the spring in there. Again, I keep these things. Uh, this less so. Uh, this is a very specific part to these drills. So, But anyway, stick it in the box. Um, now this bit is quite fiddly, so I'm going to bring this forwards. And underneath here, as you can see, there are ball bearings loose in these um, these little holes and if I turn it upside down they'll go crazy and go everywhere. Don't turn the shaft at this point because if you do they'll go everywhere as we learnt when we were taking our first one of these apart quite some time ago now. So just carefully tip those into the box. Just gonna... They do take sometimes a bit of a there you go, I think that's all of them. Yeah, that's all of them. There's one more stage to make this usable for a combat robot. You need to lock off 
this clutch system. See, you see, I shouldn't be able to turn that due to the gearbox. That should be really tight. Um, so, what most people do, and I think it's the, as good a way as any, is to put um, set screws or grub screws in these holes. Um, again, I'm not sure how well the camera's picking those up. Uh, these holes all the way around here. Um, they're M5 size. Uh, we bought some M5 5mm long grub screws and we found that they weren't actually quite long enough. Uh, they work, but they'd be better off if they're longer. So we've actually ordered some 8mm. Don't think the um, camera will pick it up, but in there, in here, there's kind of a plate and it has um, not quite teeth, but it has um, effectively pointy bits. And the ball bearings, what they do is they push down onto that. The intention is to stop it from spinning. Um, there are two ways. You can go all the way so this can't move at all. It will move when you drive the motor, but this can't move. There's no free play. Or you can come back a bit and uh, there'll be a bit of a side to side. That's preference. Um, I prefer to tighten all the way down so there's no play in this because it just makes the response from the drill when you hit the throttle a bit more immediate in that there's no no catch-up time in the gearbox to do this um, to, to, to make up that extra centimetre of twist. Um, I just find it makes the drive a bit more precise. Obviously this one's got a black case, a beige kind of colour case like this is quite common. Um, lots of them have um, four screws here around the outside. Um, doesn't really make any difference. These cheap drills will nearly always use this size uh, motor, which is a 550 size motor. This one is a 12 volt drill. Um, and get more expensive style 550 cans, which have got bigger fan uh, blades and just a bit better quality. But I find these work quite well as long as you treat them well. So that's more or less your drill unit. Uh, once you've got the grub screws in, you're ready to go. Um, there's one more step in that if you're going to be using this in a uh, kind of a high power situation, perhaps if you're going to be overvolting the motors for a bit of extra power or um, you know that you're not going to be um, soft on the throttle. The first stage of gears in these are often plastic um, and it's worth checking because if they are it's quite a real possibility that when you gun the throttle that they'll shred uh, which is it's not a problem in a drill situation but in a combat situation it's win or lose. We lost all of our gearboxes actually that we didn't modify in the first Tormentor robot so of course for the second one we've learned a lesson with making them all metal as for finding all metal gears, I'm sure there are places on the internet we've just acquired so many drills over the time that uh, we now have enough metal gears to do it. The second stage is always metal. First stage sometimes is, but if it isn't, it'll be plastic and you want to replace it with metal ones. They're always going to be the same size for this scale drill. Other than that, this is getting too long. My internet is too slow to be able to upload anything very long. So there's your drill. Uh, happy combat roboting, if that's a verb.